Okay, I have the uh, the other credenza motor on the workbench. I'm getting ready to take it apart. I've inspected all the wiring, and these wires are all in pretty good condition. I'll want to be real careful when I remove these two coils that I don't damage any of these wires, and you can do so just by bending them at a sharp angle. It'll it'll bust the insulation right off of them. Uh, one thing to note on the credenza, of course, this is the bottom side of the board, but this is the plug-in that that goes from, uh, let's see, there's a wire that goes to a socket in the back of the the uh, credenza and this is one uh, area that usually gets damaged on these wires is right here where it comes out of this wooden block. People that pull on these to get this unplugged puts a little bit too much tension on it you can see that we've got a little bit of a frayed insulation there so I'm going to remove this wire this wire goes to the switch and then from there it goes up to the power terminal on the motor power terminals are where these screws are you can see that there's a bolt here and a screw over here the power terminal goes into where the screw is and it's the same on the other side as well this motor looks to be in good condition but that I've never powered it up so I'm going to power it up before I go through all the problem of uh, rebuilding it and disassembling it and cleaning it so uh, I'll go ahead and remove this cord now and we'll hardwire it in and flip it over and see if it runs so I'll start by taking these terminals loose on the side pull that out And uh, let me go ahead and remove this block. It's just a block of wood that the wires go underneath. And you can see the break in the wiring. So I don't want to use that cord anymore. We could probably patch it up and use it. This is where it goes to the switch. I'm just going to go ahead and remove these wires all the way so I don't damage them any farther. And I'll reattach this cord. And we're ready to test it and see if it runs. Okay, here we go. That sounds good. Small amount of hum to it. Not too bad. Okay, good enough. Go ahead and unplug it and we'll pull it off the motor board. these terminals back off.
There are three nuts and bolts holding this in place. Okay, first thing I'm going to want to do is remove these coils. Coils are held into place with three screws. There's one up top here. It's got a little tab on it to hold that wire. There's a screw. And then there are two at the bottom. That's on both sides. As we loosen those up, they should pull out and away from the, from the uh, frame. There are uh, six of these total. There's one per, per uh, bolt that holds those coils into place. And you can see that they have a little hump on one side. They are intended to go inside of a, a dimple inside of the frame here. You don't want to lose those as you pull it apart. With the coils off, of the frame, there's not much left to it. There's the frame, the disc, and the governor, and of course the two. There's a drive gear that, that goes against the governor off the spindle. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the governor. The governor comes off with two screws. There's one there, and one over here that acts as a set screw. This this side goes into a. Uh, well, you'll see what happens when we take it apart. But I'm going to loosen both of these screws and pull the governor out. And I will go ahead and remove both of these pins, these set pins. And that should come out just by pulling. There we go. Governor's looking pretty nasty. Good amount of gunk on there. With the governor removed, I can go ahead and, and I want to remember that these pins have got ball bearings in them and I don't expect these ball bearings to fall out of there real, real easily because that is really varnished up. I'm going to go ahead and remove this disc. The disc comes out with these two screws. Picture of those. This is the drive gear that goes against the, the governor. This screw holds the disc in place and they're both on this, this shaft which Here's the top shaft that goes to the uh, platter. And in the bottom down here, there should be a ball bearing in here. It's not so easy to lose because it is about the size of a BB gun uh, ball. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen these screws. And this one, I've already loosened these. That should be loose enough and hopefully these will slide around. This is going to take a little bit of time to do, 
so I better get the camera out of my hand. And I'm just going to break these loose and this whole shaft should pull up.